Okay, so this is going to be it, and some of these things I will skip, like the installation setup, because we've already we are using Google Colab. But for you might want to visit this. Not, I'm thinking I'm talking with other people here, but I'm sure you'll figure out how to install Python anyway. <coughs> we'll just go through these basics and the different data structures, the things that we're going to use the most, right? Flow control and you know functions and modules, so how you import things and how you use things that you've imported. That's the most important thing. So we just gloss over this. Um, I always start with this, right? Uh, so-called Zen of Python. If you do an import this, you'll find this really nice uh, print out about Python motivation for why Python is nice, right? Uh, some rules, you know. <clears throat> so it's it's an interpreted language, obviously, similar to the likes of JavaScript and Perl, right? So meaning that when you write your code, you have to make sure that whoever you're shipping the code to has an interpreter. So um, I'm not sure if the Python interpreter has become synonymous to to um, the JVM. I'm, and I'm making reference to Windows here. Uh, on Linux, when you install, at least the distros that I've worked with, when you install them, you almost always have Python installed there, right? It's mostly a scripting language, but obviously people have done a lot of useful things with it beyond scripting. So there are frameworks like Django that um, enable people to build web applications. Uh, I know someone who was obsessed with the plow and content management system. I never could have understand. Never could understand why, right? Why are you installing plow? But so it's also general purpose, right? Perhaps that explains why it's very popular. And then it's an object-oriented programming language. We are going to be using. If you want to follow through with what I'm doing, I'm going to be using Python version three, and specifically the version of Python I'm going to be using is. I, I don't really expect. Uh, there to be any mishaps at 3.6.9. So if you want to be able to replicate some of the things, if you don't want to run into problems, you must make sure that you're running 3.6.9. <clears throat> but but I think uh, any version of 3, even the most recent one, 3.8, should be fine. Um, right. So because it's interpreted, what you can do is you can actually write within the interactive the, the, the interactive prompt itself. You can you can actually execute the commands. Um, which is why we're able to do that in Google Colab, right? Uh, but once you install Python, you can just run it on the command. You just run Python, and then you will be presented with uh, um, an interactive interface like this, Python 3, where you can do the same thing. So once you install your Python, print hello world. And then you do the same thing that we're doing in Google Colab. If you wish, what you can do is, uh, because it's a scripting language, you can create a script, csc, 5741.py, by convention it's .py. Then we, in here, I'll just say print, <coughs> hello world. Save this. Of course, you'd have the shebang there. And then I'll say Python 3, and then boom, hello world comes up as well. Right. So it doesn't matter how you're doing, because it's a scripting language, you can do fancy things. In fact, the modules that you download, right, uh, using PIP, for instance, You'll find them somewhere as modules.py files. Uh, you must tell me if this is stuff that we've already done so that we focus on the more important things. Right? <coughs> uh, if you want to download, the, the, if you're not, if you're using Windows, I guess you go here, right? But I know all I have to do here is sudo apt-get install Python 3, and then that's it. Boom. Um, and I don't know about I don't know about the Windows installation process. If you also install um, the easy installer, so the the, the the thing that the module that's going to enable you do this pip install is it pip So the, the, for me, most of the it's pip install. So when I'm installing packages, I use uh, pip command. Uh, I'm not sure if it comes by default when you install Python on Windows. So if you're using Linux, but you do the same thing, so pip install matlab, for instance, matplotlib, with matlab, right? <coughs> uh, the obvious, the other obvious question once you set up this is people will say, but what IDE, right? Uh, my 
the mother of all IDs for me, but not an ID with a text editor that I've been using for years is called Kate. It comes integrated with uh, uh, Kubuntu or KDE desktop environment. Um, but if you go to Stack Overflow, you find uh, people with their own opinions on what is uh, the best IDE to use, right? Or what is the best IDE to, to, to use here? I don't know which one is the best. For the developers in the house, I recently discovered, because I've, I've actually gravitated more towards um, Visual Studio Code, I recently discovered that there's a really nice plugin called Python, it's developed by Microsoft. Really nice, IntelliSense is integrated within this, right? So, uh, observe, if I just say make CSC 5741, and then I'll move CSC, put Py into CSC. Oops, sorry. So uh, if, I, if I'm working on a Python command, because you have IntelliSense here, I, I don't have to worry about, oh, uh, what if I don't know the command? I have this, right? And then uh, it, it actually makes you more productive, and if you can see here. Uh, so if you are a, a software developer who uh, has, zoom, out, zoom in, draw eco sign, who has a, <clears throat> who has gravitated towards Visual Studio Code because everybody's using Visual Studio Code these days. Really nice. Um, I think there's another plugin that I've come across which allows you to see what you're doing in real time. So as you're typing the commands, the output appears on the right panel. A, uh, is it A, R, E, P, L or something. So look it up if you want. Uh, what I normally do because most of the scripting I do is like it, it, less than 100 lines of code. So in, in some instances, I'll use this a lot, right? It doesn't matter, use VI or Vim if you want, right? But take your pick, whatever tickles your fancy is fine, right? It doesn't matter here, we're not trying to start a, an IDE or a text editor war here, but this is quite nice, right? What I like is I also discovered when I was looking up uh, Visual Studio Code, because I was interested, now that I'm using Visual Studio Code, can I use Python here? Turns out you can actually even view Python notebooks in here. So you have one interface where you can do everything, right? You can create your, your, your modules and then you can test them right within here, if you're interested. Uh, I don't know how many people have used Visual Studio Code. The, oh, yeah, the developers in the house, yeah. Uh, anyway, but. <coughs> right, I mean, so there's nothing like uh, explicitly uh, specifying the data type associated with a variable, nothing like int, x, whatnot, x is equal to two, I and mean, Python knows that it's an integer, x is equal to 2.5, right? But, but the thing that really puts off most people is, uh, indentation is, is, is important. So as you're writing code, like if you're in a for loop, once you write that for loop, um, full colon at the end, and I'll talk about this, and then you have to indent the code. And the indentation has to be consistent. If you're using two spaces, it has to be two spaces throughout. So it's a tab, it's a tab, right? Uh, this is the same as syntax, I don't know what I was thinking here. Um, <coughs> uh, and then, I mean, some obvious things that maybe, if, especially if you're getting started for the first time, things that you want to look out for here is uh, things to do with uh, uh, syntax associated with identifiers, right? So it's case sensitive, obviously. Um, so if, if your variables have different casing, then as far as Python is concerned, um, these are different variables. Um, these are two different variables. Uh, there's a convention that is followed, right? So you can use a combination of, you can only use a combination of letters, numbers, and underbars, right? You cannot have uh, an exclamation mark as a variable. It's syntax error, right? Uh, and I wonder if you can start with a number here. Just, but these are things, as you're starting off, these are things that you, so x12 is equal to five is correct. Is 12x correct? No, right? So a combination of, of these, but you can't start with a number. So you can start with an underbar or a letter, right? But you cannot start with uh, a number. 
Um, and then the number of uh, Python reserved words, uh, I think I should have a slide that shows the number of reserved words. Last time I checked, they were what? Somewhere at 50 or something. So you can't use those as, uh, as uh, variables, right? No, no. If, and, right? Um, and of course, the assignment operator is the equal sign here, like I showcased there. Right, so uh, if you if you go to your interpreter and you just key in uh, keyword dot um, uh, kw list, let me see if my recent version of um, Why isn't this working? Let me just. Oh, there we go. Um, so all of these things that you have here cannot be used as uh, as variable names, right? Uh, and I mean, I guess in, in most instances, the error message that comes up should be very um, very informative, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, and then, so you have block uh, uh, comments that, uh, well, block comments and then uh, with a block and inline comments and also, I think, doc comments. Um, so uh, inline comments and block comment, we use pound sign, right? So if you want a comment on top of a statement, you use this. Uh, if you want an inline comment like that, you use that character as well. You also have these doc comments, uh, and and really these these things, uh, what you see when you you issue, let's say the is it the help command, the help built-in command, or the dir command, uh, the description of the module that you're working with, um, um, but also it, it helps you define like a, a multi-line comment, right? If you don't use the number of pound signs, so what I mean by the doc comments that you see is if you say the help is it keyword or something, right? This thing here. Is it this or DIR? Not this. Maybe help to this. So the doc, the doc comments that you write uh, is what would, would come up here when someone issues, uh, issues uh, the help command so that they see what the, is it the class or the module is all about, right? And the way you do that is uh, you use either single quotes, three of them, then you close them off with three single quotes, or three double quotes, you close them off with three double quotes. <coughs> um, and then in terms of data types, uh, uh, ah, you, like I said, I mean, you don't need to explicitly state the data type. It's nothing like this is an int x, right? You just come up with a variable and then assign it a value, and then it knows. When Python sees uh, quotes, it knows it's a string. It sees uh, an integer value like this, it knows it's an int. Um, when it sees um, a float value, um, floating point value, then it knows that it's a float, a double. Um, when it sees, uh, is it uh, something like true or something, then it, it knows that this is It knows that it's a Boolean value, right? So, so Python knows this. So I, I could. So no, there's no need to declare this. So, 5.4. I wonder if this is double float, float, right? And then you can cast some of these things if you want to. And really, casting uh, perhaps becomes important when you're working with uh, certain types of data structures. Uh, I, I know that uh, some data structures have properties where you can only find unique values in there. So you might want to convert a list into a set. Um, perhaps do some, some sort of processing where you create a dictionary based on a list that you have, right? Um, I guess these are the most important things that you'd ha have to pick out, especially once, once we start looking at uh, exploratory data analysis. But, uh, so the data, data types there. Yeah, string. Uh, there's, there's this, uh, I don't know if people have come across the developers in the house, the string wall, right? Do we use single quotes or double quotes? I don't know. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, it depends, right? I don't know, by convention, which one do you follow? Uh, in uh, the, the it depends. When, like, in my case, if I'm doing um, stuff on the DBA, I use single quotes. Yes. On, on, on the DBA. On the uh, court side, yeah. I use double quote. Yeah. If you Google up, this is, there's, there's a number of interesting write ups on Stack Overflow, you know, people trying to defend we should use single quotes. Like the, the things we do in life sometimes. But anyway. As long as it works. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I don't know. Is it working? Sorry? I think the question is are you doing it the right way? Is it necessary to do what you're doing? Right. right. So I'll give an example. I think I said it last time. People would talk about an egg. Because yeah. you break an egg using a hammer, you right. break. Yeah. You can use a spoon to break. Right. But which one is more efficient? Why should you use a hammer to break an egg? Right. It depends what egg it is. <laughs> 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 it could be a lot of Or a dinosaur egg, right? Yeah. It's frozen somewhere in Siberia <laughs> or something. Yeah. yeah. If you put single words, it shows people bow, remove, put the whole thing. It's simple, don't strike. Yeah. There's always this question of how do you represent. Uh, how you represent I'm happy, right? Like if this is a string. These are things, yeah, these are, but I'm just saying, it's, it's, uh, some, some, some people would, uh, you know, just saying, some people would just say, well, but we can, we can still escape it. But, yes. but anyway, uh, let's not, uh, <laughs> when you're talking to computer scientists, this is what they do. But, okay, so the, the other, the other, the other type of like Boolean values here, um, there. An interesting thing about Boolean values that I want to mention is, and these are tricks that you might want to, I think, uh, take advantage of, right? Um, <clears throat> I think Python has this notion of, just like JavaScript, this notion of falsely and truthy values, right? So, look at this, right? Falsely and truthy values, just something. And, uh, I don't know if people are able to know. So uh, what I'm saying is uh, there's certain certain uh, values of different data types could be considered false or truthy values, right? Um, so an empty list is falsy, right? Because empty list and false is Oh, this is this is is, is this uh, it's supposed to be true, right? This is interesting. I don't know what point I was trying to prove here, but this, there's something not working here. Let's this is homework for us to discover why this is happening. <laughs> let's 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 do this. I hope I didn't uh, miss. So I don't know about the other data structures, but I do know that uh, when it comes to zero and one here, it works, right? Because zero is false anyway. But I'm just saying. I guess it works now, right? Uh, so if I cast uh, an empty string to, if I cast an in empty string to Boolean value, uh, that works. I don't know why this is not work. The other one is not working. I don't know if you see what I'm doing here. If I cast uh, a Boolean value with a value five here and and uh, and and spit out x, yeah, because it has a value, right? But I don't know why this is not working. This this is. An enigma, right? This is supposed to be, supposed to be true. force is equal to force. I don't know, but <laughs> anyway, okay. So these are things that maybe you might want to take advantage of as you are implementing these things. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, by the way, list tuple dictionary, right? Say, is it set? If it's empty, because it turns out that. Uh, uh, I think it should be, is it dictionary or set? It should be a set. Dictionary, okay. So it turns out that you represent sets, or we'll talk about these sets in the same way, uh, type x set, right? 
but when you have an empty thing that has uh, this parenthesis, this curry uh, brackets here, then it's uh, or the braces, then it's a dictionary, right? <coughs> All right, and uh, so I don't know if there's a part where we talk about. Okay, there's the part where we talk about dictionary, which is supposed to be here. But anyway. Um, and then also functions, right? Reusable code here, um, very helpful, especially when you implement those modules, the .py files, right? And uh, the implementation is as simple as just uh, specifying the function name, opening parentheses, closing parentheses, and then the full colon dictates that everything that follows below is the body. And then you come up with implementation in the body, right? So. Maybe you're just printing a string or something, or I'm trying to see if there's an example. There is an example. Um, invocation, uh, so the implementation would have um, uh, the, the function header, would, the function header would have the name for it by a parenthesis if it doesn't take in any uh, arguments, full colon, and then what follows here is uh, the body of the function. There's an example afterwards. Then the way you evoke it is you just call the function name, and then if it takes in parameters, you feed it with an actual parameter. If it does not, then it's empty, and then you have an execution. So back to our hello world, right? Uh, fx, hello. Name, open in parentheses, close in parentheses, that, who? The spectrum also have predefined functions. Sorry? The spectrum also have predefined functions. Yes, built-in functions. There's a DF keyword, by the way. They are, they are what they call built-in functions, and I think there's a way, we'll look at built-in functions just now, but what I'm saying is, you start by the DF function definition keyword followed by the name of the function, uh, open parenthesis, closing parenthesis, full colon, to say this uh, now comes the body, and then you indent it, and then you come up with uh, the actual code associated with the function. Let's say we wanted to print hello world, so print, Hello, world, exclamation mark, boom. And then the moment you evoke this, then it will print the hello world, right? If it takes in arguments, um, hello world, uh, or function add, takes in arguments A and B, and what you do, one, two, three, four. I don't know why I do that. Uh, this is the tab versus space wall. Should we use tabs or should we use spaces? Right? I use spaces and I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. But uh, so I would say if, if you, you're returning a statement, if, if this thing returns uh, something, you just say return A plus B in this case because we are adding. And then once you call this with actual parameters, um, 5 plus 7, then you have 12. Interesting thing here, right? I mean, and I don't know if this happens in Java, right? I wonder if this, uh, it's not working, then it's a concatenation, mismatch of numbers. Okay, that's fine. I thought it was going to work because I don't think there's an implicit casting. <clears throat> but anyway, so uh, you come up with implementation and then you call the function with the actual arguments, like so. Right. Uh, in this case, you are returning something. It could be the case that your function might not necessarily be returning anything at all. Oh, the, the question is answered, right? The number of uh, built-in functions, in fact, the type, I was when I was checking the type of the variable is a built-in. I don't have to import any uh, modules, right, or packages. Um, I just call type function. I know int, I know set, um, list, these are all built-in functions. Is it? Yeah, list, uh, yeah. Dict for dictionary, so these are all built-ins. Um, all right. Uh, all right, and this is similar to what I just did here, and this would probably result in an in an uh, in an error, I think. Right? This is just my my fault because when I was creating this indentation. Because uh, Python will think this is where it ends. You know? and it's like a long return statement. We're not actually supposed to be part of that. 
Um, you know. I mean, so there's things to do with all oh, default parameters that you can supply there, right? In the event that you evoke this with uh, one of the parameters missing, then it might kind of substitute this. But this is trivial stuff. I don't know if maybe we can maybe just pause and uh, I don't know if there was a uh, before we get to data structures. Do we think maybe we can just try and um, exercise a little here? I can continue talking, and maybe we can exercise a little by. Uh, what type of function can we create here? Let's, um, <laughs> I don't know if people are interested here. Let's just see if we are able to, if you are all on the same page, except for the people that already know, I guess. Uh, okay, maybe let's finish everything else because what I was thinking about involves using uh, um, loops and conditional statements anyway. Yeah, but we haven't discussed conditional statements. It's fine, maybe let's proceed. I, I, was, I was looking at people's faces and I'm thinking maybe I might be overdoing it by just continuing talking instead of this is best done. Uh, because the, the idea was to do most of the programming or the exercises when we look at the actual packages because that's where the most interesting things are. So how do you import data? How do you make data sets? Um, how do you generate graphs, right? Not the trivial stuff, but but somehow I feel there's something wrong with with this. Just talking about how functions and whatnot. Oh wait, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. okay, let's let's see if we can. Yeah, but you'd still be using loops, right? Anyway, yeah. Let's print a function that prints numbers from <laughs> from hundred to one. What uh, hints, let's just do it and then I'll, uh, the idea is I just want to walk around and see if, if there's anyone that needs me to just point them out to something, especially if you've not used, I uh, oh, don't know if it's me, I just walked there and I walked back and it came up. Uh, if you haven't used Python, I can understand maybe some things are not exactly uh, intuitive here. So I can walk around as these people are implementing a function, let's write a function that um, Write a function that prints the squares of numbers between 0 and 100. Let's print, I don't know if, write a function that prints out one number at, at a time, the squares Right? Of numbers between 0 and 100. So 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 4 squared. No, 0. Including 0 and 100. Yes, yeah. we can include 0 and 100. Here's a hint for us. We can, we can do help range. If you want, help range. Uh, it will help you g get in the habit of, uh, so just do help range. Range is an inbuilt function. Range will give you an idea of how to do this. If you just type in help range, it will show you what it is. Is there anyone that needs me to, if, if maybe setting up Google call up or something, are we all comfortable? Okay. So if you can just, maybe just, maybe five minutes, let's see if we can come up with, this is, uh, it's like we're in first year. Uh, people have changed, right? The first years I work with, in fact, second years, I think the quality has gone down, right? It's uh, shocking, actually. But I don't know what's going on here. But it's like we're in first year now. <clears throat> so if you do a help, if you just go to the Google Colab and you type, I think it should be able to spit out. What I mean is, if you just say help, ah, range. Please work. If you don't, then I don't, there we go. So this will give you an idea of how to implement that. Actually, let's make it more fancy, right? <laughs> let's write a function that prints the squares of numbers between 0 and 100 only if they are even. But just, a range would be it's a giveaway. Yeah. It's, it's not like it's a, it's a complex... Sorry, I need to run. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's a, it's a Friday, right? <laughs> Oh, remember again, which domain is that? Access Bank. Hmm, yeah, the banks, right? People want to draw money on a Friday here. I'm sure you'll be caught. <laughs> but <laughs> that's, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, we'll see you on Tuesday. Thanks. Oh, all right. <laughs> Has anyone made uh, any headway? If you do, we'll ask you to please, uh, once you make some progress, we'd want you to share the source code via here. This is why I shared that so that we see, right? Uh, and really, most of what we're going to be doing is going to involve some aspects of looping and conditional statements nothing complex really using data structures and the beauty with that's a, one of the beauty with uh, with python really you, you see how elegant it is you can do so much in uh, using short line of code um, What did I say? It's a function that prints squares of numbers between 0 and 100 that are what? Forgotten. That are even. Oh, that are even. Thank you. <coughs> now, the, the English fanatics would kill us here. Why would you do that? Write a function that prints even, uh, that prints squares of even numbers between 0 and 100, and not what I've just done here, right? I mean, the English, the construction of the English is uh, horrible, but. Um, that's besides the point. So another hint, I guess, because we haven't looked at loops, is uh, the for statement. The syntax is uh, it's for the variable in, and then so you'd come up with something like if I want to print want uh, if I want to print uh, numbers that are in a list one, two, three, right? Um, and this list is x. I would say sorry, this list is x. I would say for i in x print i, right? This is another thing because I haven't looked at uh, like just so the for statement, I guess, so two hints, maybe like a for statement and range. So <coughs> uh, I don't know if I have the link to um, <coughs> to Code Academy, but if you uh, to the but if you've used if you have, if you used Code Academy before, Code Academy has um, a nice Python Python tutorial. It's interactive. If you are not in the habit of if, if you've yeah, you've become a dinosaur like myself who prefers sometimes to do interactive tutorials than than actually reading an entire book, right? Uh, so Code Academy, and uh, I've discovered that I think they're they're doing some massive marketing campaigns. So those the premium courses that require you to be a professional. You can actually do them uh, by doing a test for seven days. So you can do a course for seven days for free that you'd pay money for. There's a Python 3 tutorial, really nice. The only free Python tutorial is Python 2, which you can do, by the way, but I guess the 3 is much better. Uh, also, in my links as we are working on this, there's a, a book that uh, when I, uh, I used to be a temporary lecturer when I was a student, and I'll teach an introductory Python course, and I know one of the recommended readings was always uh, a byte of Python. It's less than 100 pages. Really um, easy to follow, so you'd be able to pick out most of the basics. I have it listed as one of the references. I do encourage you to do that. Has anyone made some progress? Some sort of, it's fine, just, we just want to see some, uh, here maybe. I see this, who is? But to say, I, I thought, I don't know. I don't know who this is, but maybe, who is this? Have, have you done something? Maybe you can paste it there. Is it? <laughs> Sorry. 
Well, whatever people have done, just paste it here. Just log into this location and we just want to see it. Even if we haven't even run it yet? Yeah, well, maybe, okay, run it. I just, I'm looking at the time, sorry. But it's fine. Uh, also, by the way, some of the hints, right, uh, and I'm talking as a documentation. I, I, I don't know how many of the developers in the house. I, I use Zeo myself for offline documentation. So as we're working with most of these things, so uh, Python 3, I, I have offline manuals here. Uh, Zeo is quite nice. I really like it. Markdown, if you, you, you want to work through the text part of um, Jupyter Notebooks, right? So I love Zeo. You can actually download a number of document sets. Actually, it's not just... Uh, um, it's just is, but so just saying. But otherwise, these days, I mean, people normally have access to the internet, so you can always read the online documentation. I'm just saying, so Zeo is quite nice. <clears throat> but other than that, I mostly what I do myself when I'm working with Python is just either DIR and whatever help I need, or help and something that I want to find out help. That always works. Um, that way I don't have to shift context going somewhere else. Not like it. I know I think it's because we have we haven't discussed loops and and uh, range. Write a function that prints the squares of, I should rewrite this because we're recording this even numbers between zero and instead of square numbers between that are even. This is the wrong English. Much better. <coughs> Not like it. So maybe we should look at this together, right? Yes. You have something. Do Do you want to dump, just dump it here and then we'll correct it together? I think it's. Oh, okay. Uh, do you have Wi-Fi? That machine doesn't have Wi-Fi. I Oh, do you want to connect to my Wi-Fi hotspot? But Okay, I can come and look at what you've done. I wanted to beam it there, but so that everybody sees, but it's fine. <coughs> no, it's fine. Okay. Why can't you connect to the internet? I wanted everybody to see this. Can't you connect? Uh. <coughs> One plus three T. <coughs> password. password. I know I feel stupid, but it's <laughs> password. <laughs> okay, join. Um, so, okay, um, then let's just go to. Uh, can you copy this? Copy this. Yeah. Can I able to copy it? Okay. Oh, it's a Mac, right? I was wondering why it looks different. Uh, and then let's just go to the internet and then open up. Uh, so go to list.unza.zm. So list.unza.zm. Ah, so you want I had a discussion about uh, about Libgen, right? I saw it come up there. I saw you. I, <laughs> I had a class today and uh, we had a philosophical discussion about um, uh, Aaron Schwartz and how he committed suicide and whatnot after he leaked those journals from JSTOR. And I was trying to, to hear the, the third year's thoughts, and they looked at me strange, I guess. I, they, so I just stopped the discussion. Um, this is fine, I guess. <laughs> but I see you spend time on Libgen, and then just paste it there.
Okay, so there's this implementation here, right? Uh, let me see, is is uh, using if here. Yeah, I don't know if people can can spot. Uh, So what flaws can we notice already here? If we are saying the square of, uh, it's, does this work just fine? No. Sorry? Well, I don't know if we remember equivalence tests and what, what not, but in the, I don't know if this is unit testing, but but uh, let's, let's do this. Um, Maybe let's look at the output together, right? So <clears throat> actually, let's use Jupyter Notebooks instead of the terminal, the console. So we shall go here, and uh, we shall say there's that, and then there's a... Uh, J times two, and then there's a... Uh, this if statement that checks if... Um, I, I'm glad, I mean, you use the range anyway, which is fine. But you probably didn't check for um, for a part. This is interesting, right? What is the square of, uh, okay, this is, what is the square of, I mean, I, mean, I guess it would work if you just replace the 20 by, uh, because we said numbers have to be, between zero and 100, right? Um, this is fine. I mean, uh, different strokes here, but 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 really, I mean, what what I was uh, uh, <clears throat> what I, I thought people would do is if you look at range, right? The range has a it should have a step function. Also, I mean, so if if you're print if you're checking for numbers between zero and 100, I mean. You, we, have we not missed out some here? We have, right? Um, but anyway, so another way of looking at this is uh, <clears throat> uh, where is the step thing here? Because range is different. You see this? The optional parameter at the end, start, stop, comma, step. So the step is, uh, the default step is one, you're stepping by one. So what you can do is tell it to say step by two, so that your range is going to have, um, well, so you just say four, I in range uh, zero, 100. Step by two, say print, for, for starters, I mean, let's just try and see if it's going to print all the even numbers between that range, which it does, right? Um, uh, and of course, I mean, you can easily fix this because 100 is not being printed here because the last number is not printed, so you can just plus one or something, whatever, doesn't matter. But once you print these out, all you have to do is, instead of i, you just say i, I times i, and then you'd have your, because these are even numbers, right? The, 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 the trick was just, I was trying to see if people would use the <coughs> help range. Because once you, you and, and this is what you want to get in the habit of doing if you're working with something you're not very familiar with, once you read the help, it will show you the different, like in this case, it shows you to say, um, this is the syntax there. Uh, but this was good, I suppose, a very nice um, exercise. Could you read the question again? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's the definition of the question. Write a function that prints the squares of even numbers. So I thought we're printing only the even square numbers between 100, 0 and 100. As in you do this. Oh, oh, you thought, uh, okay, maybe it was, okay, semantics. Okay, that's fine. Okay, the even square numbers. Okay. Sorry, this, this. Oh, the even square numbers. But is this, uh, okay, I see what you mean. Is there a square, is there, is there a, uh, that's, sorry, that's not even. Sorry? Oh, yes, of course, okay, they're there, okay. That's fine. Oh, that's why you had uh, you were talking about the module operator, right? Okay, that's fine. Oh, this is fine as well. It doesn't matter. We're just trying to see if four would be here in range. In fact, I wanted to. Uh, it's a, it's, it was a way of me trying to say you want to develop the habit of if you don't know how a particular functional module works, help or dir. It will it will be very helpful. And also in um, in this thing called uh, Google Colab, things like question mark. 
right? I mean, like this question like something else, it will come up with a number of interesting things here. We want to develop the habit of doing this. <coughs> okay. Uh, so it was telling me 20, so maybe we can quickly do a couple of more things before we do this. So another important thing that we're going to use a lot here, these key data structures here, right? So in Python, the core data structures in the data structures are tuples, lists, and dictionaries, and sets, right? Um, and, and I guess the takeaway point, I don't know if there's an explanation for this, probably not. But the takeaway point here is uh, there are some data structures that are mutable, some of them are not mutable. Like if you have a tuple that has these values, you cannot modify that, right? So these are things to keep in mind. And because of that, obviously, a data structure like a tuple is much more efficient than a list. So if you're on the hunt for um, efficiency, you want to make sure that you use the correct data, data structure. Um, certain data structures will take in, uh, I think, different data types. I can't remember which one. Let's look at these things I'm talking about. So I'm saying x is equal to. A tuple which has four and two. I don't know what I'm doing here, why this is going off. Um, so there's, there's no way of saying, uh, uh, there's no way of adding something to x, right? I don't know if I'm making sense here. You cannot, you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot, and I guess a nice way of doing this is doing this, right? You cannot mutate it by saying the value at index 0 is going to be 8 instead of 4. It's immutable, right? But when you're working with a list, right, same contents, but a list, you can change it. That's what I'm saying. Right, these are things to think about. And for certain data structures, I don't know if it's a tuple, can you have one and string x? Yes. But how about a list? I mean, these are things that you want to think about. Oh, yes. Uh, I think all of them then, right? Perhaps it's sets, I think. For sets, oh, it works as well. I don't know what I was thinking here. Anyway. I'm probably misrepresenting different languages here. So it turns out that you, you know these different data sets, type tuples, um, uh, lists, and dictionaries can have uh, a variation of different data types, right? So you can have integers and strings combined into one of these data into one data structure. It doesn't necessarily have to be composed of the same um, same uh, the variables of the same data type. Um, so, I mean, if you're, in, if you're working on a problem that involves uh, making reference to key value pairs, and you see this a lot once we start working with pandas data frames, so you want, you probably might, you uh, come, come across use cases where you want to use a unique identifier and map it to a value, right? You'd use a dictionary, key value pairs. So a dictionary is one of those data structures that uh, is represented by key value pairs, a key and the corresponding value. Uh, you use the key to reference the value as opposed to the index here. Um, what else is worth talking about in here? Yeah, that's just about it. Uh, uh, some, some other weird things that you come across is observe. Uh, you cannot, yeah, I don't know if you notice what just happened here. Uh, the set only includes unique values of items. So if you have duplicates like this, they're merged into one. And uh, I, again, you come across use cases where you'd want this, right? Um, I, I do this a lot when I'm, I, I guess, uh, like I'm trying to find, uh, what, I'm trying to think of a unique case here. I'm working with a list and I know it has duplicates, but I want to have a list that does not have duplicates, right? All I do is I just, I will say, uh, observe, if this is, boom, if this is a list, x, type x is a list, right? And x has duplicates, all I'll do is I'll say list, uh, I'll say x is equal to set x, right? And x now has duplicates. And in fact, I can again mutate x and just say x is equal to uh, list x, right? And then I have this. And in fact, if you look at what, what I just did here, right? I could just say, well, if I want, if I have a, a duplicate of 
of x is like so. Why, why not just say, uh, I want x to be, to have unique value, so I'll just say set x, and then just say call list on on this set x, right, instead of doing it separately, right? So um, this high, whole notion or idea of chaining functions is quite common. Um, again, I will draw you to the Zen, right? Uh, where is that? Simple is better than complex. Uh, I wonder if there's a Zen that is to do with that. I can't see it here, but anyway. I guess this is beautiful to me anyway, yeah, but... One, two, three. Sorry? One, two, three. Oh, yes. Simple is better than complex. Right. Find out the list and the array. So your, your list would be an array, actually. It's an array? Yeah. yeah. Um, in Python, at least. Okay. Uh, so here's a question, right? Do we think that we've got into a stage where if we see... Uh, so my interest is the reason I, I decided to integrate this is once we start looking at some examples, um, my my goal is to make sure that when we start walking through, because to cut down on time, I rarely I tried this the first couple of sessions last time where I'll do we'll do the implementation together, write the code together, but we're wasting time, right? So what I started doing is I'll implement the notebook come with it here and then we execute it to see what's happening behind the scenes and then I share the notebooks with you, you play around with them and modify them, right? My goal for doing this is to make sure that once I bring a notebook and I'm walking us through the theory and the practical, you are able to understand these things. Of course, we haven't finished some of these things. You see you see these things, you should be able to understand what's going on. That's why I'm, we are going through this process, right? Um, and also, more importantly, for the mini project, right? Um, you want to be able to already come up with implementation. By the way, the topics will be ready by um, next week, so be on the lookout. Okay, uh, this problem has started again. I don't know why this is happening. But <clears throat> let's maybe finish off uh, uh, this, and then it looks like the part to do with uh, pandas and matplotlib, we can integrate it together with exploratory data analysis next next week. So we'll have a brief introduction and then immediately dive into the EDA process, which is data, is, it, is that data preparation or data understanding? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> right, so, I mean, loops, I think we've already looked at this. The key thing with Python, right, the thing that really uh, confuses beginners with Python is the indentation and this funny thing. There are no uh, explicit statement terminators here, sorry, right? Um, so these, these are things that uh, that you usually can, can be a pain actually when you're doing this for the first time. But once once you familiarize with yourself with Python, you will really grow to love it. I assure you. Maybe, hopefully by the end of this uh, course, you will do that. And I, I, I remember this one time someone had asked, but for the mini projects, can we use uh, Java? And I laughed, but but yes, we can. But I, I I was reminding him to say if you look up online on most widely used languages when it comes to machine learning. Java is not on the list, right? You probably find tutorials on R, maybe MATLAB or something, but for the most part, it's Python, right? What I'm trying to say is you're not restricted to any implementation. If you're comfortable with R, I do encourage you to use R, right? Which is nice. I only use R for statistical analysis and uh, visualizations. I do not use it for machine learning. I use Python for machine learning. Um, not the only one. But the other thing really is this whole notion of modules, right? Um, so if you have a library that uh, someone has implemented, like we will start, soon start using Pandas and Scikit-Learn and, uh, and uh, also Matplotlib, how exactly do you use those things in your code? Can't remember what we do in Java, but in Python, we use import statements. And there's two ways of importing libraries or packages or modules, right? Either you do you, you use the import keyword followed by the name of the library or mode you want to import or use from followed by the package and then the specific mode you want to import. The difference here is just that uh, when you when you import when you import something using the import statement, what that means is you have to explicitly 
use the package name so math dot what you're interested in so in this example if we want to compute the square root of a number like uh, well nine is it nine right we cannot say sqrt we will have to first of all import math and then say math dot sqr and then say nine if you're okay with this, it's a, again, we don't want to start a war here, but it's a matter of test. If you're okay with the dot notation, that is fine. I sometimes use it myself. But if you want to be more elegant and you want to cut down on time, you can just say from math, import the explicit module, which is SQRT. And then what you do there is you don't need to um, explicitly use the dot operator. right? So from and import from x import and import sometimes you might want to import everything import uh, or from math import everything asterisk if you're working on a math problem and you see this a lot in uh, i guess matplotlib or something so for math get everything and then you have access to everything you want right um, uh, this will come up a lot like if you look at what I have in this notebook, for me to be able to use most of the things here, like uh, if I'm doing text processing, I obviously have to use NLTK, right? Um, I gain access to a stemmer here if I'm trying to stem those things. Remember the preprocessing task we spoke about. Uh, <clears throat> if I want to gain access to specific learning algorithms, I of course need to use the scikit-learn uh, library, right? For within that library, there are a number of modules, right? Um, so, yeah, but the key thing here is you just need to know how to import things. Uh, because we already know the other important thing how to read the manual to understand how to access the different modules within that library, right? Because for you to know that uh, uh, if you, you, you want to access the TFIDF factorizer, for instance, you must know, and how you know, you must know that from SKLN, this is where you import it, and you're only able to know this if you have access to the manual, right? Zero, or the online help documentation should, should be able to suffice. But it's just the importing, right? When you're importing modules that you're interested in. And the, the, the for when it comes to Python, really, you rarely do, it's at least insofar as machine learning is concerned, you rarely do anything new, right? You are reusing things that already exist. Irrespective of the type of machine learning problem you are working towards, clustering, um, uh, regression, you know, uh, classification, there's already implementations out there, right? All you have to do is run experiments to find which implementation is better, and then you, 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 you just state that you went through this process where you empirically ran some experiments and determined that uh, perhaps SVM was better or something. <coughs> Oh, and I had a square root here. <clears throat> okay, so maybe uh, we can continue the math plot stuff, or we can graph some if you want. But I think Mr. Zul is about to leave. It's almost 20. Um, <clears throat> so we'll continue the uh, the pandas part. It's a short one, and pandas and uh, math, math, uh, math, lib, um, and then we'll start looking at the EDA process.